In this chapter, we're going to look at surround sound. I'll try to get you past a couple of the common stumbling blocks so that you can begin experimenting with surround sound on your own. By the end of this chapter, you'll know a few new terms, be able to set up surround buses, and see some of the surround tools in action. There's nothing magical about surround sound, it's just more complex because you've got more channels. Most of the terms in surround sound are fairly easy, like left, right, and center. But one term in particular can trip people up. It's the LFE, which stands for Low Frequency Effects. It's the subwoofer channel, and it's also the 0.1 in 5.1. Now the first thing that you'll need is to set up the output buses. Open the VST connections and add an output. Now which one of these formats you choose depends on your customer or your application. For this, we'll use 5.1. Now let's assume that we're working on a soundtrack. That means that we'll probably have stereo music, and we'll want that to go just to the left and right speakers. To do this, let's set up what's called a child bus. Right-click on the 5.1 out and select Add Child Bus, and then a stereo configuration. Now, if you twirl open the child bus, you can see it automatically routed to outputs 1 and 2, which carry the stereo mix in this case. Now the point of this is that we have the option now to route tracks to the overall 5.1 bus or just to the stereo child bus within it. Now for example, if I open the routing here for the stereo track called Music Beds, I can send it directly to the child bus and leave it out of the surround equation altogether. If I route this to the 5.1 output, the standard panner automatically becomes a surround panner. The meter on the left side shows the input level, and the meters on the right side the various output levels. And the dot is the source of your sound. This is where you'll hear the sound effects coming from in the theater. And as I click and drag the point source around, you'll see the levels changing in each of the surround output channels. You can see the speakers around the edges and click on them to mute them if you want to. Now most of the other controls here are just here to help you do this more precisely. Along the top, I have controls for the coarse or fine adjustment. I can lock to just the vertical movement or horizontal. And the guy on the end lets you click anywhere in the surround field and have your mouse jump to the dot. And the eyeball is used for an overview mode. The first row of knobs has basic left-right controls, but the orbit and radius are a lot of fun. The radius moves the surround off-center by a given amount, and the orbit control lets you spin it around in a perfect circle for 3D effects. The last knob turns up the amount of LFE. In this example, we're using dialog, so we'll leave it at zero. The bottom row of knobs is used to blend or soften between speakers. You can adjust these to determine, for example, how much of your center channel should widen into the left and right speakers and so forth. And if you totally mess it up, click the arrow in the lower right to reset everything. Almost everything in the stereo panner can be automated too, which is really cool with orbiting effects. Speaking of effects, let's take a quick glance at one of the best for surround work, Reverence. I'll add it as an effect in 5.1. Now let me send some of the surround effect to it. And notice that it's automatically configured for six audio channels. And since Reverence is a convolution reverb, it provides hyper-realistic surround sound modeling, perfect for Foley work and soundtracks. The last thing we need to look at is the Mix Convert plugin. Now we touched on this in an earlier chapter. Open the control room pane and press the last button on the speakers tab to call up Mix Convert. To review, the point of Mix Convert is to help with downmixing to a smaller number of output channels. If you think about a traditional mix down, it's the same idea. You start with a 24 track recording, but you have to listen to it on a stereo CD, so you mix down from 24 to 2. Well, this is the same idea. We need to downmix from 5.1 to 2. Just like a traditional mix down session, this requires some artistic input to get the mix to sound right. And just to be clear, if you have a 5.1 project, but you're outputting to a 5.1 file, you do not need Mix Convert at all. You only use Mix Convert when your output format has fewer channels than your project. So 5.1 to stereo, or stereo to mono, and so forth. Okay, let's think about the traditional mix down again. If we were going from a 24-track project to a stereo master, you'd have to balance 24 faders against each other while setting up the mix. 
Well, Mix Convert breaks it down into three faders, one for each of the major surround sound components. Use the three faders in the center to balance how much of each dimension you want included in your down mix. So in this example, if I want to showcase the front or center channels, dial down the surround to almost nothing, and leave some of the LFE, I can simply adjust the faders. Mix Convert takes care of all the details in the background. You have solo buttons at each end of each fader so that you can solo the input of that element and then solo its output. You also have the option to listen to that signal on your front speakers, which makes sense since that's the same way that the end listener will hear them after the down mix. You can also use the gray triangles to solo individual speakers. This lets you hear exactly what's coming from or going to any given channel. Now let's move on to our last chapter and look at a few more tips and tricks.